four prophetic instructions are not just for me, but it's for the body of Christ. This is my contribution as revealed by God. These are the prophetic strategies for the times that we live in. This is true for our nation. This is true for businesses. This is true for individuals. And please, I want you to pay attention. I do not claim to know everything. We are all students learning from God, learning from the fathers. But I can tell you there are things that we have been given as an election of grace. And in as much as we honor the body, we stand confident upon the office that he has given us. So some of the things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables. No. Is someone ready? Four prophetic instructions for this tribe of Issachar to thrive, especially in the seasons that are unfolding. The first instruction is in James chapter 1 and verse 19. Let me tie it up quickly and then we'll pray. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. This is the first prophetic instruction. This came by the Spirit to me. For you, my dear people, and then by extension for the body of Christ. First instruction. Let every man, let how many men? Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Believe me, men and women are going to lose their bishopric because of compromising on this instruction. There are many people who, if they do not manage themselves in business, in ministry, and so on and so forth, this is a time that requires high-level discernment. Be quick to hear, but be slow to speak and be slow to anger. Because there are many things you will call God that is not God. And there are many things that you will call evil. And you will not know that it is light coming out of darkness. Listen very carefully. Instruction number one. Let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. There are many good things God is doing in your life. That will stimulate anger in your life. You will need self-control to allow what is doing to come to fruition. Because at the end of it, you will find out that even your being thrown into the lion's den is for your exaltation. So you need a lot of self-control. This getting angry and boiling over nothing, many people will abort prophetic seasons because of the absence of self-control. There are many of us that need to trust God. Once you can just calm down, you will see the hand of God rearranging things. And then you will find out like my precious people sang. That what the enemy meant. What was that thing you said again? What the enemy meant for evil. I think you should sing that, that part for me again. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Very powerful. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Sing it one more time. Very prophetic part. You will take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good But here's my question Do you have the patience to allow God finish his work? Or are you angry that you want to interrupt God? God, you are too slow Let me show you how it is to be fast You hear that they are about to sack you and you say, God, they are about to sack me. And he says, stand still. Stand still with five children and 11 relatives. God, you must be wicked. You are seated in heaven, dear streets of gold. And God says, all right, if you think I'm too slow, go ahead. And you go ahead and you find out it was a rumor. Your fear and anger now makes that rumor a self-fulfilling prophecy. They say we were looking for one person to drive. It was a rumor that it was you. But now that you have demo, you came by yourself as a sign that you are ready to leave the job. Hear me. Prophetic instruction number one. Dear Issachar generation. Be slow. Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak. There is something called due season. There are many of you, you preserve your honor by speaking only when necessary. 
most of us you have cheapened the value of your destiny your words no longer carry life and power because you have wasted it upon the ears of those who do not deserve to hear you speak you must understand the value and the power of your words let your words carry power and weight that if your words actually come out they come out when needed are we together be quick to listen satan will try to challenge you provoke you to speak it takes a lot of self-control and discernment the bible says a word spoken in due season say due season prophetic instruction number one i repeat again be quick to listen nigeria africa body of christ this is a prophetic word for the lord from the lord james 1 19 is my first prophetic word be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath let's finish it verse 20 why does the bible say slow to wrath it said for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of god when you allow uncontrolled anger to lead you it will most likely lead you out of the will of god are we together now prophetic instruction number two is someone listening now obtain light through the ministry of the word obtain light through the ministry of the word obtain light from the ministry of the word refuse to walk in darkness this is what god told me romans 15 and verse 4 let's hurry up please romans 15 and verse 4 the bible says for whatsoever things were written aforetime they were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope there is nothing happening to you now there is nothing happening to us as a nation there is nothing happening to your business that has not happened before it was written so that we may find hope obtain light from scripture this is the wrongest time to depend on emotions the believer and the spiritual man is only spiritual to the degree to which you have submitted to the word of god as final authority in all matters regardless your emotions are we together written a four time for our learning psalm 119 and verse 130 psalm 119 still on prophetic instruction number two 119 130 the entrance of thy word it says give it light say light and the bible says it gives understanding to the humble or the simple it is dangerous to run your life and your family neglecting scripture light must come from scripture more than newspaper more than social media this is a time in your life where you must respect the supremacy and the value of the word the believer is not just one who is saved and has given his life to christ but one who has constrained his life to be governed by the word of god obtain light don't walk in darkness don't speak in ignorance make sure you have a biblical perspective to everything and from that perspective you act number three the third instruction god gave me are we are we receiving tonight watch and pray watch and pray the third prophetic instruction that i received from the lord watch and pray matthew 26 41 please give it to us matthew 26 and verse 41 jesus was speaking to the disciples he said watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation it says the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak i'll not say so much here because i had a teaching on this very um word watch and pray watch is a function of intelligence in other words do not throw your intelligence watch and pray you will need the faculty of your mind as well as the spiritual advantage to resist temptation in this time don't just pray blindly watch and pray watch means you will make use of your mind 
your mental development will add to your stability your preservation and your security then he says pray he didn't say pray and watch there is a role your mind must understand certain things and then you can gain higher perspectives from the spirit for many people we are praying and throwing away our minds that's why even what we receive from the realm of the spirit cannot be converted to a context that blesses us spirituality does not ignore the place of intelligence please hear me i teach on over dependence on the mind not dependence of the mind the mind is a useful tool as far as the manifestation of the life of god is concerned are we together now in fact the bible says receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul watch and pray Ezekiel 22 and verse 30, a popular scripture here. I sought for a man. Watch and pray. Can I tell you sincerely? I know that we are going through a very difficult phase across the nations, particularly in Nigeria. We just finished our election. There's another set coming. Believers, we must pray. We must pray like never before the prayer ministry of prophetic intercession. We need intercession rising from the north, the south, east, and the west. Discussing issues have never really solved them. It may start the process, but there are things that we must settle from the realm of the spirit for anything that brings glory to God to be made manifest. We must pray. I sought for a man to stand in the gap we must pray pray for the soul of our nation pray for the politicians pray for i i gave you a prophetic instruction here i'm not going back there i told you three uh groups remember remember the prophetic word i gave you here i said there are three groups we must pray for and i'm still saying it again one INEC, two law enforcement agencies but three and most important the judicial the judiciary especially the supreme court i will leave it there but you should know that i don't speak as a fool hallelujah when pray for these three entities with all your heart i repeat one INEC, two law enforcement agents that means uh, uh, police military dss three pray for our entire judiciary election tribunals but especially the supreme court are we together prophesy to someone say watch and pray watch and pray the person had the watch part say pray pray i believe in the ministry of prayer please do not downplay and ignore prayer when i say prayer i always like to qualify it prophetic intercession there is a place where you pray for yourself i have taught you but right now we need to move past the realm of self-centeredness and for god's sake make our spiritual contributions to pray for our lives for our nation for africa for businesses for the program of god third prophetic instruction for the Issachar generation watch and pray watch and pray number four this one surprised me because you'll be surprised to know that this fourth one came very early this morning very very early this morning that's when this came john chapter 3 and verse 31 the lord spoke to me and said tell my people to reject a victim mentality i didn't understand what that meant i mean i'm looking for serious issues what is victim mentality again listen carefully tell my people to reject a victim mentality and this was the scripture he gave me i woke up with this scripture he that cometh from above is above all all what that's the question all what all what when the bible says all anything lower than god is that all he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth he that cometh from heaven 
is above all. Listen, there is a victim mentality that believers have. And the Lord used a figure in the Bible and I had to study him. The man Daniel, one of the graces God is releasing upon the body of Christ is the, that mantle that was upon Daniel. Daniel was a man who from scripture, he reigned through the dispensation of four different kings and nobody could push out his relevance. Listen carefully. Number one was Nebuchadnezzar. Number two was Belshazzar. Is that true? Number three was Darius. Number four was Cyrus. Four kings. And he reigned through the four dispensations and nobody could throw him out of relevance. Now, I'm not just speaking in terms of politics and all of that, but do you know there are many believers today who clamor and pray even as touching politics governor house members it is not because they really desire a glorious nation it is because we have educated ourselves through a victim mentality that if i have my person or someone who can advocate my personal interest i stand a chance to be happy whether for the next four years or the next eight years let me tell you what the bible says it says woe to him that puts his strength in a man Daniel is that one man that came, even though a Jew, he came to Babylon. Daniel 1 and verse 8, one determination that Daniel made, that Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Because of that decision, I can begin to show you all the things that happened to Daniel. When you read chapter 5 and verse 10, when they were drinking with the vessels of that they brought from the temple the wife of king Be, i think that should be belshazzar now she began to make all kinds of noise and she called and said there is trouble here oh. and verse 12 they brought daniel and they said there is a man who has an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding in interpreting of dreams and so on and so forth let's go down to verse 28 we'll read to 30 and stop at 30 for sake of time he was interpreting the handwriting on the wall mene mene it says thy kingdom is divided and given to the medes and the persians 29 and commanded belshazzar and they clothed daniel they clothed daniel with a scarlet and all of those things happen look at what happened in verse 30 the bible says that night was belshazzar the king slain 31 the last verse says and darius the median took the kingdom he prophesied oh king you have been weighed and you have been found wanting the bible says that night the king was slain and when darius came if somebody prophesied and somebody died and you come it will be stupid for you to throw that person away. Let me tell you the truth. Depending, I'm saying this responsibly, depending on any businessman, politician, uh, what they call it, captain of industry, to magically change your life because of the sympathy and affiliation of bloodline and the rest, you are already practicing idolatry not knowing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Believe me when I tell you this. God uses men. But please hear me believers and hear the word of the Lord. I am telling you, take away a victim mentality. You come from above. And whether you are in Russia, you are in America, you are in Nigeria, you are in the north, south, east and west. Provided you are in the will of God. The Bible says, thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph. Shout, I can never be a victim. Let the devil hear you. I can never be a victim. Carry that mentality. There is no business structure. There is no political party whatsoever. When you advocate righteousness, it's because of the purposes of God. Not fear that your interest would have been sabotaged. No. Because your economy is driven from heaven and by heaven. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? 
That is the reason why you find people having a lot of balloon success. Under a particular government or dispensation, say, they will reign and thrive and do well, and then another government will come, and you find out that they go down. Not Daniel. From chapter 1, chapter 5, chapter 6, Daniel only kept going upward and forward and moving and excelling. Even in Egypt, Isaac sowed in that land and received that same year and hundredfold and all kinds of increases came to his life. Can I tell you, it is a mentality I have carried as a person. Is a mentality I have carried as a man of God. Is a mentality I have carried as a leader that I can never be disadvantaged. This is not some Pentecostal gibberish. I have indoctrinated myself to believe that one with Christ is not only a majority, is victory. Victory personified. I carry the spirit of the living God. I live by the word of God. I submit to the governing authority of the king. No. If you carry a victim mentality, people started carrying victim mentality more formally from after the pandemic. In fact, during the pandemic, there are businesses that had no business crashing, but because they carried a victim mentality, people keep endorsing failure and give all kinds of flimsy excuses. I'm, I'm an empathetic person. I'm not speaking irresponsibly, but let me tell you, you must, you must gird up your loins tonight. And receive this prophetic word and say no excuses for failure again. I am not a victim. The Bible declares that he that cometh from above. Many people right now in Nigeria, there are battles for or against different political parties, you know, from presidency down. And I can submit to you that there are people who are pursuing the cause of righteousness. They have the track record, they have the antecedents, and there are people that we, we love and honor. But there are people who are largely pursuing their interests. When you see people begin to clamor, it's because where they think money will pour from has now been closed. And they can't afford to have it closed that long. The Lord is my shepherd. The Bible did not say the Lord is shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He may not be our shepherd. I don't know what you believe. But the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody say my shepherd. My 